The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> Ethelbert, why the grin? Well, Casey, tomorrow's Halloween, and I keep thinking of old Lem Peabody. Why him? Old Lem could think up more tricks for Halloween. Nobody could beat him. He was famous for his tricks. Well, I suppose that's one way to get famous, to do something better than anyone else. Oh, you're so right, Casey. And you know, when you make something better than anyone else, you become famous, too. And that's why Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Great Grandfather's Rent Receipt. <laughs> Blue Note Cafe, the night before Halloween. Hmm, strange, that's tonight. <laughs> In honor of the event, the long mirror behind the bar has been more or less tastefully decorated with the decorations used last year and uh, for a number of Halloweens before that. And Casey, regarding them critically... Uh, Ethelbert... Why don't you ever get some new decorations in this place? Yes, and those witches look awful tired. I know, Casey. I told the boss, but he said the only guys who'd be critical of our old Halloween decorations were a few of our old customers who always owed us money anyway, so... Uh, <clears throat> boy, did I step into that one like a dope. Why, Casey, <laughs> you know I'd never dream of hinting. But if you got 28 bucks and 40 cents in your pocket... All right, here's 20. I'll let the age 40 ride and give me a receipt. A receipt? Uh-huh. Since when ain't you trusted me? I always take receipts. You never asked me for one before. You didn't let me finish. I always take receipts for dough paid out just before Halloween. Just before? It's been an old family custom, Everbert. Ever since my great-grandfather's terrible experience. What was that? Hmm... Well, maybe I'd better let sleeping ghosts lie. Sleeping ghosts, did you say? Yeah. Great-grandfather's experience was with a supernatural. Uh-oh. I think we've stepped into something, Ethelbert. Is it scary? Hmm. It scared my great-grandfather plenty. Uh, uh, like to hear about it? <laughs> You're set to tell it anyway, so go ahead. Yeah, we're listening. Well, to begin with, great-grandfather was a Casey. And the Casey's were Irish. Now he tells us that. <laughs> My great-grandfather Casey, whose first name was Patrick, by the way, was a young guy when this happened. And by his own admission, he was one of the laziest lugs in County Cork. Oh, so you get it from him. <clears throat> I'll ignore that. But like all of us Casey's, he had a lot of talent and personality. We ignore that. <laughs> <clears throat> well, he was a fine fiddle player. And all the girls around were crazy about him. Especially Molly McBride to whom he'd become engaged. Well, one fine October day in Ireland, nearly a hundred years ago, the two of them were on their way to pay the rent. Patrick, will you get up off that log and stop your fiddling? Ah, now, Molly, darling. How can you delay so when what we have to do is so important for us both? By noon, you promised to pay Sir Timothy the rent you owe him. Dark night will be upon us before you reach his lordship's door. Ah, oh, the old man won't mind. Sir Tim dotes on me, Molly. Why, when I served under him in the army, pat my boy, he used to say, pat my boy. Give me that fiddle. Here, here, now let go, Molly, you'll break it. Patrick, last night when me father, against his better judgment, lent you the farm rent you owe Sir Timothy, t'was faithful you promised him you'd settle down to work and stop idling, idling with your tunes. That, that is a promise I'm keeping... From the day you and me are married, on the day after All Saints Day. Oh, so you're putting off keeping it. Patrick Casey, unless you make up your mind and turn over a new leaf this very second, there'll be no marriage between you and me. 
I promise. Sure, sure, I swear it. Then let's be on our way to his lordship's. We start this very instant after you give me a kiss. No, that's wasting time. Kissing you is never wasting time. Now let it? me go, Pat. Let me go. Oh, no, darling. Oh, Patrick. Tis so much stronger you are than I am. Ah, I love you, Lana. You really are going to settle down. You'll no longer be just procrastinating, Pat, the lazy fiddle player, as folks call you. I so want you to be known as Mr. Patrick Casey, the ambitious businessman. Tis that I am right now, Molly. Then let's be on our way to Sir Tim's. Tis like the wind I'll go there, but first let's have another kiss. No. Ah, just one, Molly. No, I tell you, Patrick, no. Ah, no. Oh, Patrick. Tis so much stronger you are than I am. Well, that's the kind of a guy my great-grandfather was when he was young. And that's the kind of a gal Molly McBride was. Well, I hope she finally bent that fiddle over his head, Casey. <laughs> no, she didn't, Annie. Great-grandfather got what was coming to him another way. Go on and tell us. Well, Ethelbert, the two of them got to the landlord's house about five or six hours late. This landlord was a tough old character. And the rent owed him was long overdue. And outside his door, Pat had an attack of cold feet. Molly, Molly, I've been thinking. Uh, poor Sir Timothy's a, a very sick man. And we shouldn't disturb him so late in the evening. Now, let's, let's come back in the morning and... Patrick, uh, no. It's not a second longer. I'll let you procrastinate. Here, now, don't pull that bell cord, Molly. Aye. Aye if you're going it. to take me as your bride on the day after All Saints Day, Pat Casey... It's a house you've got to have for me to live in. And there'll be no house unless your rent is paid. Have you still the money that my father lent you? Aye, it's safe inside my pocket. And now, when you pay it to Sir Timothy, mind you get a receipt for it. A receipt? Well, it is a businessman I'm making of you, Pat. You get a receipt. Oh, darling, you don't understand. No, I don't. Oh, someone's unlocking up the door. Ah, it'll be old Michael Feely, his lordship's body servant. And another hard, rough man. He was once a sergeant over me. Oh, uh, so it is you, Pat Casey. You're late. Get you inside here. Uh, yes, sir. Come on, Molly. Here he is, your lordship. Who? Uh, oh. uh, at last you stand before me. Take a good, good evening, your lordship. Good evening, you bid me. When at noon you said you'd be here. Come close to this chair I'm chained to with me sickness, and I've twist your lion throat. Stay where you are, Pat. Yeah, I will, Money. Uh, Lord and Bones, he's brought a woman with him for protection. He did no such thing. As a responsible tenant of your lordships, he brought me here to introduce me. Do it, Pat. Um, uh, uh, Sir Timothy O'Hare, uh, this is Money McBride, my uh, future wife. Uh, you, you are the future wife of procrastinating Pat? I am going to marry Mr. Patrick Casey on the day past All Saints Day, Your Lordship. <laughs> Mr. Patrick Casey? Oh, 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 me fat size. Oh, oh. Me condolences, young woman, and me heartfelt pity. But future wife or no wife, Pat, I want the money you're owing for a full term's rent. And since you can't pay, as I knew you couldn't, I'm going to ring your Your Lordship, <laughs> I have the money for you. Huh? Here, look. It's in this bag. Oh, Oh, Michael Feely, bring me brandy quick. For quick. the full term, your lordship. I borrowed it to pay you with. Oh, borrowed it, yeah. That explains everything. For a moment, I thought you'd gone to work and earned it. Hmm. Give me the money, Pat, and may the Lord help its lender. Me father lent this money, sir. Your father? And sure, you mustn't take a word I've said in earnest. See, I told you, this man dotes on me. Molly, we'd best be going now. Uh, not till you get your rent receipt. Molly, I beg you. It is a matter of business. The man might die and we'd have not to show. Ah, Sir Tim will never die. Because heaven won't have his likes and the devil will be fair to take, take him in. Uh, what are you two whispering to yourselves about? I, uh... Please, Your Lordship, uh, for the rent Patrick's paid you, we want a receipt. Uh, a receipt? No, no, Your Lordship. Uh, yes, I, Your Lordship. Have you got his regard to Miss Tustin or her? No, sir. But just the same. We want a receipt. You... Oh, brains and bones. Uh, all right, young woman. You shall have it. <laughs> You've picked the card in for yourself who knows what she wants and, and, and gets it. <laughs> and a seat she wants for procrastinating, Pat. 
And she's going to marry the ninny. <laughs> the, the master has a poor weak heart, Pat. You should take shame for yourself making him laugh like that. Really? Your, your, your lordship, what, what's the matter? Pat, he slumped over in his chair. Michael. Michael Feely. My dear master, Sir Timothy, he's dead. Dead? Ah, I was mistaken about the devil. He wasn't afraid to take his lordship. Pat, we didn't get our receipt. Oh, well, it's all right, Molly. The silver we paid is here to prove our claim. Where is the silver? He laid it beside him on the table. Well, it's not there now. You... Molly, the money's gone. <laughs> it was a great mystery where the money had gone to. My great-grandfather and his fiancée searched everywhere. Did they search that servant case? No, 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 Ethelbert. But there was to be later proof that Michael Feely didn't take the bag of silver. Well, uh, tell us what happened next. I'm going to, Annie. You know, a hundred years ago, you couldn't just pick up a telephone and call in help when death occurred. So they laid the old man out decently in his bed, and Pat was putting off going for a priest and the undertaker while Molly worried, and Michael Feedy sat grief-stricken in a chair. We've no receipt to show you ever paid that money, Pat. When Sir Tim's son John takes over the estate, he can hold you for the whole term's rent again. Why, he can do no such thing, Molly. Not when there's Michael Feely to testify that he saw us pay it. I'll testify if I'm able, Pat. If he's able, he says, Pat. Mind you, you don't stop him laughing himself to death. I can't realize me, dear old master's gone. Pat, do you really think the devil took him, as you said a while ago? Well, as, as one who uh, knew Sir Tim's character, Michael, in, in, in both war and peace, I, I hardly think the blessed saints would want the man. Uh, wherever he's gone, he's all alone. I'm all alone after being his friend and servant 40 years. Pat... Where do you suppose our rent money went to? To my mind, uh, the solution of that is very simple, Molly. Uh, knowing how his lordship loved money, I think he took the silver with him. Sure, and it'll be entirely melted by now. But you shouldn't be talking to the dead this way. Whatever else you may say of him, Sir Tim was a man. And now I shall hear him not call me Michael Feely no more. Michael Feely. Michael Patrick! Molly! Michael Feely! Oh. Michael Feely! Tis the voice of me master. I'm coming, Sir Tim. Oh, Michael has come to join you. Stop him, Pat. He's our only witness. Here, Michael, wait. Come back. I'm here, your lordship. Again. We together again. Here, Michael. Michael. Here, now stand up, man, and speak to me. Ah, Molly. He's not... Yes, the man's dead. Oh, now we've got nothing to show for the rent. What are we going to do? Our story will continue in just a moment. America is literally a land of milk and honey. And thousands of American beekeepers are producing just about the best honey on earth, straining it and bringing it to your table in convenient crystal clear glass jars. These jars of liquid sunshine range from a pale, pale gold to a deep, rich amber. And each is packed with energy, quick energy, safe energy. Keep a jar of honey on your breakfast table always and serve honey with hot breads of all kinds. You'll find that honey adds an exciting note to the most everyday menu. And there are dozens of uses for honey. Honey is wonderful to sweeten cakes and cookies. Honey is delicious on cereals, and it adds new zest to beverages. Strained honey comes to you today in crystal clear glass containers, for glass highlights honey's brilliant color, lets you see at a glance its clarity and purity. Clean, sanitary glass brings this liquid energy to your table untouched by any foreign flavor. And of course, glass jars are easy and safe to open. Anchor glass containers and easy-to-open anchor caps so widely used by the packers of honey are products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Uh, 
the ghost of that old Sir Timothy called the servant, huh, Kate? My great-grandfather said there could be no mistake about the voice, Ethelbert. Huh? It was Sir Timothy O'Hare, and he was dead. Gee, then the servant died, too. Definitely and completely. Which uh, left your ancestor in quite a tough spot. Well, the spot got tougher, Annie. John O'Hare, Sir Tim's son and heir to his estate, was a lot different from his father. He was one of those cold, fishy, holier-than-thou birds. And the old man had despised him. Naturally, he demanded the past due rent on Pat's farm. And when he was told... I swear I paid the rent, Sir John, just like we've said. But you have no receipt. We had a witness. And like my honored father, that witness is dead. Enough of this farce. Patrick Casey, a term's rent you owe. If you do not pay, I turn you off your farm. Oh, we meant to be married on the day after All Saints' Day. Huh. Better for you, Molly McBride, that such misfortune be averted. Casey, tomorrow is All Saints' Day, and I want my money then, or out you go. I can't borrow the money twice, sir. I care not how often you borrow it. I ask only that you pay it once. You traduce me father's holy memory when you say you gave him that of which he left no trace behind. Well, how could he leave a trace, sir, when his master took him off so sudden? What do you mean by his master? The devil, of course, sir, who took both man and silver. You dare insult the sacred memory of me parent, holy, pious man who was now with the heaven's angels. Patrick Casey, I gave you till All Saints' Day to pay the money that you're owing. Now I won't accept the money. Instead, you must bring proof of the vicious scandal you've just mouthed. And when you don't, I'll not only turn you from your farm, I'll have you jailed for slander. Oh, Patrick. Oh, Molly. It seemed to great-grandfather that he didn't have a possible out after that one. He took Molly to her home, and that night on Halloween... The two of them sat on her doorstep while he played the hopeless thoughts he was thinking of. Don't play any more sad tunes, Pat. Put your fiddle down. All right, Molly. There's a fine mess of things I've made. Is there nothing that we can do? Well, you heard the young lord. Tomorrow I must produce proof. That you paid his father money. And that his father took it with him to uh, where I think he went. Tis a difficult assignment. Tis a tremendous assignment. You'd have to die yourself to get such proof. Molly, do you, do you insinuate that if I died, I'd be thrown into association with the likes of Sir Tim? Oh, no, the Lord forbid. No, if, if I could only meet the devil here, in, in a, a personal, friendly way. Patrick Casey. Molly. Tis me father calling from inside. Molly, may have that good for nothing and come into the house. Ah, uh, your father don't like me since I lost the money that he lent. Molly. I must go in. I love you, Pat. And I love you. Good night, darling. Good night, Pat. Sure, and a cold doorstep is soon the only place I'd have to rest. Well, come, fiddle. After tomorrow, it'll be you and me wandering in the cold, hard world alone. Tomorrow, come all saints' day, Molly will be lost to me forever. Ah. Could I have another chance, I'd mend my ways. I'd even go to hell for another chance. And <laughs> would you, now? What? <laughs> Procrastinating, Pat. <laughs> His lordship's voice. His laugh. Michael Feely. Michael Feely. Yes, my lord. It's both of them speaking from the dead. Michael Feely, fetch that lady scoundrel down here. That I will, Sir Tim. Where are you? I can't see you. Ha! Ah. Now, I see you now, Michael Feely. Your, your ghostly form. Come, Pat, to his lordship. No, 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 now go away. If you fear, stay where you are. If you dare for the chance you wish but now, then come. You mean for Molly? Aye. Sure, and it's dreaming I am, but lead on. You have not far to go. The door lies here. Door? There's but a hole in the ground. It will close like a door once you enter. Do you dare? For, uh, for Molly? Aye, so Tim waits below with your entry seat. Lead on, man. I follow. First lay down your fiddle. It must be left here. My fiddle? Tis wood and very dry. Oh. I, uh, I get your implication. 
Then stay here and scorch, fiddle. Now lead on quick, Michael, before I change my mind. Come. I come. Ha! Ah, the earth is closed above me. Here, let me out! <laughs> you ask admittance, Patrick. Now you stay a while. Well, you, you, you have the silver I paid you and, and, and my rent receipt. Now you're going to give me one or the other so I can wed Molly on the day after all saying. Stop! Oh, excuse me, sir, for my social error. Here I know one should not mention saying. Don't! Oh, they, uh, oh sure, I, I'm completely mortified at my own bad manners. Uh -huh. well, now, Sir Tim, w will you please hand me that silver or my rent receipt, and I prefer the last name. Not yet, Pat. Nothing for nothing is the road we live by here. If something you want, then something you must do to earn it. For what you hold, I'll do anything at all. <laughs> You're a fiddler's boy. Will you play us a tune? Ah, it'll be a pleasure of the finest. <laughs> but above, sir, Michael Feeney had me leave the fiddle. Yeah, because here we have a special one for you to play. Here it is, Pat. The... Ha! Ah! It is one of metal that... Glows with white hot heat. <laughs> you can leave this place as you came in, a worthless bag, Bond, or you can leave with self respect and win the calling that you love. Which fiddle will you play? The one you left outside, or this one here? For, for, for Molly, you'll, you'll give me that rent receipt? Or oh, the silver to prove your tale to the fool who is my son. I advise the receipt. It is asbestos. The silver has been here over long to ever cool. I'll play your white hot fiddle, sir. Yeah, Michael Feely. Play it in his hand. Aye, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now play a jig tune, Pat. Oh. And do not skimp it. No. Play every note and dot and bar. Oh. Play from beginning to the finish and earn your right to live and love. <laughs> Grandfather didn't remember the details of what happened right after that. But next morning, on All Saints' Day, the sexton found him lying in the churchyard in a peculiar place and in a peculiar condition. He ran to tell Molly McBride, and she lost no time in coming back with him. Speak to me, Patrick. Tis me, your Molly. His eyelid fluttered open then. The man's coming too. Oh, thank heaven. He lives. How, how come he to be lying on old Sir Tim O'Hare's grave? Oh, look at his poor hands. They're burned to the bone. Yet he's clutching something in them, something white. Ah, uh, second chance. Hey, speaking. Tell me you're all right, Pat. Oh, Tell me. Molly. Molly, darling. Oh, Pat. I'm a cushler, Lana. Oh, even I... now, Pat, you're so much stronger than me. <sighs> Why are you lying here? And what happened to your poor hands? Oh, my hands. Molly, what day is it? All Saints' Day, Pat. Tomorrow's our wedding day that was to be. This uh, is to be, you mean. Leave me to Sir John. What do you mean, Pat? Da, soon you'll know, for yonder Sir John rides. Run, Patrick, this is your last day of grace. Run and hide before he has you jailed. Sure, and I'll not run from that man. Where's the fight apart we want? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Barney, Colum, seize that with his scalp for me. No, no. Touch me not, I warn you all. Here, Sir John, is your parents' rent receipt. Pat! What stuff is this? But do you go at morning? You said you had none from his hand. That was a day ago at morning. Do you know your father's writing? <gasps> Holy saints, his very scrawl. But yesterday it's dated. It was made last night, to be exact. Eve of All Saints' Day. When came you by this... Uh, perhaps, Sir John, uh, for your family's honour, it is a matter we should discuss in private. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody step aside. Not I. You'll have no discussions, Patrick, that I don't know about. Perish the thought, darling. Now, Your Lordship, that we're all alone, the three of us together, you'll know this receipt is writ on unburnable material. It is in my favour's hand. Dated since his death. I uh, see that you've drawn your own conclusions. Patrick. Where on earth did you get that writing? Nowhere on earth, my darling. Well, your lordship, is this the proof you demand? Ah, uh, Patrick, my friend. If you'll just give me that receipt, we'll let the matter drop. Uh, to preserve the reputation of your sainted father, I'd be glad to let you have it, sir. But this receipt is all I have to show that I paid me rent. I'll give you another gladly. 
Well, now I, I, uh, I have a fancy for this one. I'll give you a receipt for two years, Pat. No, now I'm thinking that the signature of a dead man on asbestos will be worth much more than that to autograph collectors. We'll say five years free rent and the money you borrowed I'll pay back myself. Pat! Take it quick. Hold your horses, Molly. I am thinking, Sir John, that the bride I take tomorrow should have a fine wedding to Russo. That too I'll give. And a wedding trip, the two of us, like across the seas to America. It's yours. And I'll throw in a personal gift to boot, Pat. I'll buy you a fine fiddle. Ah, that you won't. From the feel of my hands, I never want to see a fiddle more. But all else is a bargain, Your Lordship. Bring that uh, that paper to the manor, and we'll put it all in writing. Goodbye to you now, and blessings on your way. Oh, Pat, five years free rent, a, a bridal trousseau, and a trip to America. Kiss me, my darling. Would you have me waste time before I get the deal in writing? I am now Mr. Patrick Casey, the ambitious businessman. Oh, Patrick, I don't like you this way. Oh, and don't you know? Come to me, Molly, my darling. You know, it's your way. It is much stronger you are than I am. We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. Our government asks us to save food to help relieve starvation abroad. Now, there are more ways than one to save food. You can use less or you can use food to better advantage. So here's a suggestion. Serve more oven-baked dishes. Delicious, nourishing baked dishes can be prepared from the less expensive cuts of meat or from leftovers. And your family will enjoy these big, steaming casserole dishes, particularly when they come to the table warm, fragrant, and appetizing in beautiful pale blue Fire King oven glass. Fire King oven glass is amazingly easy to clean, amazingly sturdy. Now, you'll find Fire King oven glass at 5 and 10 cent stores, department stores, and other stores selling household glass. Fire King prices are amazingly low, and every piece is guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Father married Molly McBride on the day after All Saints Day, huh, Kelly? Uh, yes, Ethelbert. And when they came to America on their wedding trip, they liked the place so well they stayed there. Eventually contributing one press photographer to their adopted country. <laughs> and a very good press photographer, Annie, if I may say so myself. You can't win with this guy, Miss Williams. Now, I've discovered that, Ethelbert. Casey, huh? there's a gorgeous moon tonight. Huh, it's a real harvest moon, Annie. Uh, you like to... Drive home the long way? Oh, if I didn't. I'm sure, it's as much stronger you are than I am. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Prime Photographer is directed by John Deeks. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Pat was played by Carl Swenson and Molly by Kathy McGregor. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Girl Scout Week. The Girl Scouts believe, and rightly so, that better citizens build a better world. Tonight, Anchor Hawking gladly salutes more than a million girls from 7 to 17 and their leaders who are part of this splendid movement, making a real contribution to peace through understanding and friendship. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.